Is your Lightroom catalog a mess? Well, never fear, Mike Wardinsky here, and today I'm gonna to show you how I import my photos, organize them, and I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks along the way. But before we get started, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com to check out my website for more in-field workshops, private post-processing lessons, and some great articles as well. So moving right along, a good organizational strategy starts at import. So I'm gonna to go to my import box here, and I've got one photo, and I'm not gonna go into these settings too much because I've got a really great video on how to set up a Lightroom catalog and how I import. If you'd like to watch that, click the link in the upper right corner. The one thing I do wanna point out here though is right here under destination. This is your main options for organization. You could choose to put all of your photos into the um, original folder or into one single folder, but I actually recommend doing it by date. You can change the name of the folder afterwards. You don't even need to leave the date in the folder. But the reason I like to set this to date is because a Lightroom automatically remembers your last import settings. So if you change this to date, it's going to import in alphabetical order using the date format that you choose. And the reason I like this is because if you forget to change the date, your photos aren't going to go into the same folder that you previously imported to. They're going into a new folder by the, the date. And if we scroll down here, you can see um, what that looks like. So you can see all these are organized by date. And then here's our new photo right here. So even if I don't want this date as a name, I'm gonna go ahead and import it that way anyway. And I can go ahead and rename this later. So I'll go ahead and import. And here's our one new photo. And you can see that our new folder has been created here. Now, if I wanna go ahead and rename this, I can. All I have to do is control click on a Mac or right click on a PC, and then I get this little dialog box. And then I can go to rename. So I can either leave the date in there and just call this Fox Photo, and I can hit save. And if I want, I don't even need to leave the date. I tend to like the date in there, but if you don't wanna organize by date, that's fine. Just hit delete and get rid of that. And now we have a folder called Fox Photo. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And you can see right there, the name actually changed. Now you can see, again, I like to organize by date, but then add an extension to the name, such as where I was shooting, like Yellowstone or Bosque del Apache or Kauai. And underneath those parent folders, I organize by the actual location or sublocation um, or by day of that particular trip. And I like to keep them nested under one parent folder It just because it just helps keep my Lightroom catalog a little more tidy. And then in addition to that, I also label my parent folders with a color. To do that, simply control or right click on the folder and then just choose add color label and then you can change it to whatever color you want. Or if you already have a color, you can go to none. So for the sake of this example, let's say that I wanna add this Fox Photo folder into another folder called Yellowstone. So we can do that by going to any parent folder. So right now I'm just gonna choose 2023. I'm gonna control click there, and I'm gonna choose create folder inside of 2023. And then I can create a new folder. We'll call it Yellowstone. And then I have the option to include selected photos if I wanted, or I can just leave it unchecked and, and simply drag my own photos and folders in there. So I'm gonna leave it unchecked for now and hit create. And so there's my Yellowstone folder, and now I can drag the Fox Photo folder underneath that. And you can see it's nested under there just by clicking this little triangle, and now there we have our Fox Photo. Now I have this Yellowstone in Winter folder here, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one and drag it down there. And if I wanted, again, if I wanted to rename this, I could control click, rename, and let's just say maybe I wanna call it Yellowstone in Winter 2023. And there you go. So however you decide to organize your photos is up to you. Just choose a system that makes sense to you. Um, again, I like to keep the actual date in front, um, but it is important if you are gonna keep the date to, to make sure you tag the location or whatever is in that folder. That way when you do searches, you can find something. So if I were to come up to my text search bar, if you don't see this search bar, hit the backslash key and it'll come up and you can search by text and let's just type Kauai. Now nothing's coming up, and the reason nothing's coming up is because I have this Yellowstone folder selected, and of course, there's no photos of 
Kauai in Yellowstone. But if I were to come up to the parent folder that hosts all of these other subfolders, watch what happens. Oh, I lost my text, so let me do a search again. There's Kauai, and now here's all my photos from Kauai. And the reason these are coming up, it's not because the photo names are titled Kauai, it's because they're in folders that are titled Kauai. So that's why it's really important to be careful what you name your folders. To clear out the search, I'm just gonna come up here and hit the X, and now we're seeing everything that's in the 2023 folder. Using folders is just one way to organize your photos in Lightroom. Lightroom has a whole range of organizational tools that we can use. One of my personal favorites is collections. So I'm gonna come down here and click the downward arrow, and you can see I already have a couple of collections made. Collections are essentially a way to organize photos without moving them on the hard drive or moving them in the Lightroom catalog. For example, let's say you wanna create a collection of your favorite photos. You could do that by creating a collection and then adding your photos, your favorite photos to that collection. You can also create collections based on shooting location or your subject. So let's say we want to create a collection of all of our favorite Yosemite photos. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign here and you can see I got a couple options. I can hit create collection, choose a smart collection or a collection set. To start off, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create collection. And we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call this one Yosemite Faves. And then I could put it inside of a collection set, which is essentially a parent folder, but we're not gonna do that right now. And I could also choose to include selected photos and I can choose to set it as a target collection. For demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and choose set as target collection and hit create. So now I wanna find some photos from Yosemite. I'm gonna to go to the grid view and I'm gonna hit the G key to do that. I'm gonna go up to text and I'm gonna go ahead and search for Yosemite. And here's a, some photos from Yosemite and these all popped up, not because of the file names, but because of the folders that they're located in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start to pick a few photos. Maybe I'll select this first one. And since I set Yosemite to a target collection, all I have to do is hit the B key, B for boy, or I can choose this little circle in the upper right corner and it automatically goes into this collection. And you can see this little plus sign is telling me that this is set as a target collection. So that's what a target collection is. But we don't have to use the B key or hit the circle. We can also drag and drop. Maybe I wanna take this cool abstract water shot in there, take this meadow shot, and let's scroll down, maybe the coyote. I'll hit B this time and you can see it added down there. And just for good measure, I'll go ahead and hit the circle on this one and we'll take this one as well. And maybe this one. And you can see now we have seven photos within our collection. So let me come back up here. And this time I'm gonna create a collection set. And I'm gonna call this one National Parks. And I'll hit create. And you can see here's my National Parks collection set. Now there's nothing in it right now, but I can simply drag my Yosemite faves and put it in my National Parks collection. And then I can create a new collection and I'll call this one Yellowstone. And this time I am going to choose put inside a collection set and I'm gonna choose national parks and then hit create. And so now you can see I have my Yosemite faves and Yellowstone. Now I need to be careful here because if I just go and hit the B key or hit the circle, watch what happens. It goes into Yosemite, which is fine because I'm still in my Yosemite photos. But if I come back up here, I wanna go to Yellowstone. And now I'm gonna change my Yellowstone folder to a target collection. So to do that, I'm gonna control click, right click on a PC and set as target collection. And you'll notice the little plus sign has moved and now I can come up to this one, hit the B, come over here, hit the B key again, maybe this one, and you can see there they are. So you can see how powerful collections are. These are really useful tools to organize. So to recap, collections don't change the location of a photo on your hard drive or within Lightroom. All it does is that it allows you to organize photos that might be in separate locations in Lightroom together, like your favorite photos or photos you wanna export for print. And what's great about these collections is we can actually export them 
as a catalog. I'm not gonna go to, into that in this video because I have another video on it, which I'll put a link to in the description of this video. So if you're interested in how to move a collection to a different Lightroom catalog, go ahead and check the description of this video. Lastly, let's create a smart collection. So I'm gonna come up here, create smart collection, and I'm gonna call this one five star. And right down here we have our rating is greater than or equal to, and let's just choose five stars. And so if I hit create right now, that's gonna put every five star photo into this collection. But we can add rules if we'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this plus sign, and we can set the photo inclusion to any metadata that we'd like. I'll choose label color. And we can choose if we want it to be a specific color or to not be a specific color. In this case, I'm gonna keep it to is, and I'm gonna choose blue, which is my shortcut for TIFF files. So now I'm gonna see all of my five-star TIFF files because blue files are my TIFFs. And I'm gonna hit create. And right now we're only seeing a few photos. And the reason being is because I still have my Yellowstone search enabled. So I'm gonna hit this X to clear that out. And now we're seeing all my five-star blue labels. And you can see right here, I've got 294 of them. Now I realized that I didn't put blue label in the name of this collection, so I'm gonna control click, choose rename, and I'm gonna hit the right arrow to get to the end, and then I'm gonna type blue label, and then rename. I highly recommend getting comfortable using collections. They're a great way to find photos very quickly and stay organized. Keywording can be another great way to organize your photos in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go up to my keywording tab, and right where it says keywording tags, I'll hit this arrow, and then I can start typing tags. You can see I have this lava photo selected, so let's call it lava, and I'll hit the comma to create a new keyword, and let's call it black, let's add red, Hawaii, and vertical, because it's a vertical photo. And when I'm done, I'll hit return, and you can see there are all my keywords. Now, once I have some keywords entered, I can go down to my keyword list and they'll show up right here. Now, we've got a couple of photos here from Hawaii, essentially this one all the way down to here. So if I shift click, I click my first photo and then shift click on this bottom one, I'll select all of these and then I can come over to Hawaii and go ahead and hit this checkbox. And you can see now that tag has been added to all of these photos that I had selected. So that's a very quick way of adding keywords. You don't have to manually type them in every single time. Using color labels, star ratings, and pig flags can also help organize your catalog. If you look down in the bottom toolbar, you'll see I have my color labels, my stars, and the pig flags. If you don't see these, simply head over to the right and go to this downward arrow and make sure you turn on flagging, rating, and color label, and then they'll pop up. You'll need to do that in the library module and the develop module separately. Color labels and ratings are very personal and it's really up to you to choose a system that works for you. I can tell you mine, but it might not make much sense to you. For me, the purple label is my prints. These are proofs and prints that I'm actually gonna be printing. The blue label is TIFFs. These are photos that have been edited in some third-party software. Next we have green, that's my HDR photos, but I also use it for comparison photos for lessons because I don't have a ton of HDR photos in my catalog. Next I have yellow, I use that for panoramas. And lastly, we have red. And red is any photo that's designed to be blended with another photo. That might be for a panorama, it could be for an HDR, uh, focus stacking, anything, it's gonna be red if it needs to be blended. And the reason I like to mark those is that way I don't throw away something that looks like trash because a single photo on its own might be overexposed or underexposed or maybe it's a weird framing because it's part of a panorama. Um, and so using these labels will kind of help um, organize that way. Next we have our star ratings. How you decide to use a star rating is up to you. A lot of times when I'm just going through my photos after an import, if I like a photo and think I might wanna edit later, I might hit a one star. If it's a really good one, I might hit two stars. And if it's really, really, really good, like I'm gonna be wanting to edit it as soon as possible, I might give it three stars. And then the four and five stars, I typically save for after I've started to process the image. 
And lastly, I'll use a pick flag if that's the if I've edited the photo and maybe I've got a couple of different versions. The pick flag will help me know which one is the final image. Okay, that's it. I hope this video helps shine some light on Lightroom organization. And of course, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just like to say thanks. And lastly, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great how-to articles, in-field workshops, and private post-processing lessons. See you in the next video.